Hey you guys, so here I am walking out in the field again because, again, I need to go check on the second calf. If you remember last week I was checking on both of them, well, Frosty had her baby uh, last Friday night, so he's a week old today, not quite, but he will be this evening. And she had a little bull calf, and uh, a couple of people asked, well, what kind of cows are these? Um, they are... Irish Dexters. Um, that's a heritage breed. They're all registered and purebred. They are about half the size of your average Angus or Hereford cattle. So they eat less. We chose them because they're a dual purpose breed for both meat and dairy. Um, I have not yet milked any of them, but I could. Uh, Frosty, the one that had her baby, he, she's super tame. Anyway, so she had her little bull calf. There was no problem. He's super cute. And so I'm watching Gypsy today. She's due in the next two or three days, most likely. Um, the reason I'm out here talking to you from here to do the intro for this video is because it's quieter. Uh, my kids are doing their schoolwork. My husband's actually off today. And so he's like mowing and weed whacking and doing all this noisy stuff. So I like didn't even have a place to, to go and video for you. Okay, Gypsy's the black one here on the right. It's all right, Mama. Okay. Hi, buddy. It is a beautiful day. We've had three days of kind of rain and about 45 degrees this week. So today is probably 60 65 degrees and really nice and sunny so he's doing good mama's doing good this is sage she was born last fall and this is her mama clover right here and so i'm keeping an eye on gypsy today i think her due date is the seventh so a couple days anyway mostly i just wanted to come out here and show you the little the baby and then also just uh give you the intro on this portion of our sock series. Where we left off was at the end of the foot portion of the scatter bee two at a time. All right, so the reason that I have chosen again to do the heel flap and gusset is because I really don't care for short row heels. I mean, there's lots of people that do it very well. Um, I think they're less customizable for a different size feet, whether you have a high arch or whether you don't. I like the versatility of the heel flap and gusset and the fact that I can do the the reinforcement with the slip stitch. Um, so I think they're, they wear well and they're durable. Now I'm not saying you can't do that with a short row heel. You could work that out if you really wanted to. You could work out how to, how to do the slip stitch reinforcement and so on. Um, I just haven't gone there. So uh, mix and match your toes and heels to whatever you prefer. You're the boss of your, your knitting. All right, so let's get started with that. The scatter bees are looking pretty good. I've measured, I had my daughter try them on and I'm approximately three inches from the total overall length of her foot. So I am ready to begin my heel flap. Um, the pattern calls for the FLK heel or the fish lips kiss heel, which is a, as I mentioned in an earlier video, it's a downloadable pattern for $1. And you can do that if you like, and in which case you'd want to keep knitting your foot until I think like an inch and a half before you're ready to begin the heel. Um, I'm not going to do that. I prefer the, the heel flap and gusset for several reasons. One, I think it's more durable, and two, I think it's more easily customizable for your, like the diameter around your ankle, the height of your instep. Um, if you're a person that has a high arch, then it's easy enough to deal with that. And we'll talk about that more in a minute. So I am, actually I'm not at the beginning of the round. The beginning of the round, if you recall, was when we knitted straight across the back here. And so I've done that, I've turned my work as if I was going to begin knitting across the top of the foot stitches. However, now is when I'm gonna leave these alone and I'm gonna knit the heel flap. So I'm gonna begin by purling back across the back side of my sole stitches. Okay, so we're now we're going to be reinforcing and working on the bottom of 
our heel, right? So I'm gonna purl my way back across here to start with. So this is kind of the only time you're gonna knit with it on the backward side or with the inside of this facing you. So we're gonna go ahead and slip the first stitch as if to purl, all right? And then I'm just gonna purl my way back across both socks. I've knitted, or sorry, purled across the both of those heel flaps, and now I'm going to turn my work, being careful not to twist the yarn that's coming from my project bag, and I'm going to just continue doing the um, slip one, knit one reinforcement, just like we did in the other video where we did the, the customized toe up sock. And also, this is the same heel flap and gusset method that I use most of the time for my um, cuff down socks. It's just kind of flipped or it's reversed so that the reinforcement's on the bottom of your foot as well as the back of your heel. So slip that first stitch as if to purl and then knit one, slip one, knit one, and so forth all the way across. And we're just going to go back and forth like this until we achieve the size of the heel flap that works for you. Now I have cast on 72 stitches on each sock so that's 32 or sorry 36 on this half. So I'm going to have 36 rows for my heel flap or 40 if I have a particularly high arch um, because the number of heel that flap rows that you do depend will determine actually the number of heel flap rows that you do will determine the number of gusset stitches that you pick up along the side, which in turn determines the diameter of your sock around the ankle and the top of the instep. So as I get to the last stitch on this heel flap, I've done the slip one, knit one all the way across. So there's my knit one, slip one, and I'm gonna knit the last one through the back loop. And as I've um, shown in previous videos, that's gonna create a nice chain stitch edge along the side that will allow you to pick it up and you can see it more easily than if you chose not to do that. Um, that's also important to slip the first stitch for that same reason. So it's just gonna create a nice edge for us to pick up later. Okay, so I slip the first one, knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, and we're always slipping as if to purl, notice that. Okay, and just go all the way across until you get to the last stitch and knit that last one in to the back loop. Now, the chain edges, since we're slipping the first one, you'll have half the number of chain edge stitches as you do total rows. So I will have 18 chain edge stitches on the edge and 36 rows. Okay, so carry on with your heel flap in this way until you get to the size that you'd like. It needs to be at least a square. Most of the time it will end up being a rectangle. Um, the other way that you can check is you're going to want to knit this heel flap. Okay, there I go into the back loop of the last one. You're going to want to knit this heel flap so that the when you're done, the top of the heel flap, or well, what's actually gonna be the back of the heel, so we're knitting the heel flap, the back of it is actually going to be at the back of the heel. I have turned my work again now and I'm going to go into this first stitch as if to purl. And I'm just going to purl my way back across the insides of those two heel, the heel flaps I'm working on here. I just split a stitch there and be careful about that. So you're just going to continue in this way. The right side is your slip stitch reinforcement and then you're purling your way back. Let me do a few rows and then I'll show you what the chain edge looks like. Okay, um, my apologies for the cat in the... I can't get her to move. She keeps coming back. She's fat and sassy and somewhat irritating, so we're just going to deal. Um, but I wanted to show you, now that I'm a little ways into the heel flap on both sides, I wanted to show you what the edges look like. Because we knit through the back loop and we're also slipping the first stitch, so it makes a nice chain edge. You can see that, and that will be easy to pick up when it's time to decrease and pick up these gusset stitches. See that nice edge? Let me get the camera to focus there. There, see that's gonna be really easy to be able to see where to put your needle under there and pick up that edge. So, right on. Okay, so I'm gonna carry on knitting my heel flap 
and I can count those edges to see how many I've done so far and how many I still need. So I cast on, uh, well, like I said earlier, I cast on 72, so I have 36 across my each of my heels, and so that would make 18 chain stitches. Um, I will probably do a few more than that, um, but if I just wanted to count them, it's easy enough to do. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've done ten. So just halfway. And I'll probably do a little more than that. I'll probably do a total of twenty for mine, which would be um, actually forty rows. Um, just because I like things in round numbers. And I want a little bit extra length for mine, I believe. Well done. We have finished our heel flap and now we're about ready to turn the heel. Um, pardon the shadow and the kitty whiskers. This is Oliver. He thinks he needs to help. Um, he's really not helping and he's kind of a butt really when it comes to the yarn and the knitting and it's difficult to make him move. Um, and I've been trying to redo this video about three times so we're just going to go with it and deal with the little kitty problems. So sorry about that. Okay, so I have gone through this uh, heel turn a couple of different times, and if you want to see it more slowly, I will put a link in the upper right-hand corner of this video so that you can click over to the customizable toe-up sock. Um, but I'll, I'll run through it here, um, maybe not quite as slowly, but, you know, slow enough where you can actually rewind it if you needed to. And as always, be sure to holler if you have any questions. Um, so we're going to begin the heel turn, which is basically just a series of short rows that creates the shape. So as always you're going to start by slipping the first stitch and I'm going to choose to carry on our slip stitch reinforce, reinforcing method. So slip the first one, knit, slip and knit that same sequence um, until you get to half the number of stitches that you have here. I have 36 across here so that would be 18 and I'm going to knit two past the center. So I'm going to go 20. All right. So there's 20. I'm going two past the center. Now, if you find that that makes too pointy or too much of a V shape on your heel, you can go a couple more past there. Go, you know, two or three more stitches past, and that will make a more rounded heel cup, if you will. Um, so, but the kind of the general rule in this works no matter how many stitches you have is go two past the center, and then we're going to perform a left leaning decrease. So we're going to do the slip, slip, knit. Okay, slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, go into the bottom there with your left needle and knit those off. Okay, so that's our left leaning decrease and then knit one more. Okay, now turn your work. Now, you can either make the choice to pause right here and then go ahead and do your next needle the same way. I don't really think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and complete the whole heel turn on one sock, and then I'll go do the other sock. Um, I like the continuity of just continuing this one heel turn with one sock so I don't forget where I'm at. You do what works best for you. So I'm going to turn the whole thing, and now I'm going to slip this stitch as if to purl, and I'm going to purl five, not counting the one I slipped, okay? So one, two, all right. And then purl two together. Now this is a little bit finicky to get in under that stitch that, that I slipped before so that you know I get that one and not half the other stitch. So just be mindful, be careful about that. And then purl another. So purl two, so slip the first stitch, purl five, purl two together, and purl one. So now we've created this gap. Do you see over here on this side, there's a gap. So count how many stitches you have on the right side of this gap. Six, I have 14. Hopefully I have 14 on this side as well. Nope, I have 13. Wait, maybe I counted that wrong. I should have, oh, I think I counted that fuzzy nubby bit as a stitch. So let me double check, two, four, six. 8, 10, 12, 13. Good. I have 13 on each side, so that's great. Now, if you were, remember how I said uh, go halfway, knit, knit, do the slip stitch pattern halfway across, and then knit two, two past halfway. If you were to go like four, three or four past the halfway, that would just mean you'd have less stitches on each side, 
and less pointy of a, a heel cup. So that's totally up to you, whether you have 13 left over on this side, or 11, or 9, or, or whatever. Generally, it will be an odd number. Now go back to your front and slip this first one. Now if you're going to continue with the reinforcing slip stitch, you'll notice you can see those columns. Those columns that are more pronounced are the ones that you're slipping. We slip this first one, okay, then knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, and you're just going to do this across to where you made the gap. Then you're going to do your left leaning decrease or slip, slip, knit to close that gap, all right? And then knit one. So we close the gap and created another decrease. Turn your work, slip the first one and purl your way back to the gap. So you'll notice as you start doing this and decreasing this, you're gonna have a time when that slip, slip on knit one sequence doesn't quite work out evenly. So you may just have to knit two in a row at the beginning of that. Uh, to accommodate that and then continue with the slip stitch pattern or sequence, pardon me. So now I'm at the gap and I'm going to purl two together to close that space and purl one. Turn your work back. So this is, this is what I'm saying. Let me untangle myself here. So I can see the columns that are more pronounced are the ones I've been slipping here. So slip the first one. Now, I would look at this column and I would think, well, I need to slip that one too, but I don't wanna have two slip stitches in a row necessarily. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit this one and I'm gonna knit the next one. And that's okay, you won't even notice it, I promise. Slip one, knit one. All right, and then you're well on your way. So just be mindful if you choose to continue that reinforcing sequence, you know, you'll work that out. So slip as if to knit, Slip as if to knit, knit those two together, knit one. Okay, so you're gonna carry on like this. You can already see this is starting to create the heel cup. Carry on like this until you have used up the decreases, or sorry, you, until you've decreased away the stitches on both sides of your gap. And then do it, go ahead and do that to your other sock as well. All right, I'll show you what that looks like when I've done that. All right. So I finished the uh, heel turn on this, this first sock, and one thing I wanted to point out was now that I've purled my way back across and I've closed all the gaps, the working yarn is coming off my right hand side. But I need to go ahead and move over to my second sock and complete the heel turn over there. So all I'm going to do is simply, I'm just going to knit across this and keeping my slip stitch pattern if you're doing that. So I have this yarn on this side, which will be the appropriate setup for our next step, which is picking up the gusset stitches on this side. And so go ahead and just, you know, knit this straight across and then complete your heel turn on your second sock and do the same there. So then you'll be leaving it for the next step with the your working yarn on the left side as the the heel flap is facing you. Um, so then we'll be all set to, again, to pick up the gusset stitches down that first left edge. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that, knit through the back loop like we have been, and now this, this sock is ready to pick up this edge. And that will be our uh, next session, or the next episode. Episode? What is this, like a soap opera? It could be. But anyway, now I'm set up here to begin my heel turn. So on this second sock, again, I'm just going to knit to the halfway point and then two pass, and I'm going to do the same thing I did on this side. Yay, we have both the heels turned now, and I have both the working yarns on the left side. And so next time we'll be ready to pick up the gusset stitches here on the left. Okay, so you guys are awesome, and I just want to say I really appreciate your support for Pearl Together. I appreciate you joining the Facebook group and subscribing to the YouTube channel. Um, we'll try to have our online knit night like once a week. So it, unless I'm off backpacking or I'm at the cabin in the mountains, which I will be, 
uh, quite often this summer, but maybe not during the week. So we'll sort that out. We'll work out a schedule. But um, we also have some international members in our group that I want to try to figure out how to include them. Um, you know, maybe I'll have an online link that I'll get up at six in the morning and so it's evening in Italy, whatever. We'll sort that out. So join the Facebook group and or the Ravelry group for links and more information about that. All right, as always, if you find these videos helpful, like and subscribe down below. And uh, be sure to leave a comment and a thumbs up. And all right, take care. Have a wonderful weekend.